It's lockdown and survival in this week's show. While on your daily walks, bushcraft expert Johnny Crockett shows you what's good to eat in Britain's hedgerows. Kai at Britain serves up a hearty broth and Sergio Couto explains how meat rich hunters can share with those in need. Plus, beat the supermarkets. I reveal my choice for natural loo paper. That's your body taken care of. For your mind, we have a series of surveys for you to fill out all about your shooting kit. Working title, the original Amazing Self-Isolation Surveys, or OASIS. Fill them in and help us develop a new community resource, allowing everyone to make informed decisions about the hunting, shooting and outdoor kit we buy. Plus, there are prizes to be won. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. We talk to international hunters about their experiences in this time of C19. And we have Hello Charlie. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Right, this yeah. one. Oh, you, you've got to try some. Help yourself. I will. Yeah. Uh, from, from the gorse flowers, I'm getting initially, in fact, a little bit of a smell of coconut, but I get the taste of raw runner beans, yep. followed by the taste of coconut again at the end. It's a little bit bitter, but it has actually, to add that to a salad, just about spot on, I like that. And colour as well. A lot, yeah. lovely colour. So is it, I mean, is that very sustaining? Well, how much of that could you possibly get? <laughs> you need to eat a lot. Um, and of course, you've got the risk of hurting yourself on it as well. Um, it's just one ingredient which is part of a bigger meal so you're not going to come out here and just eat gorse you're going to come out here eat a bit of gorse and just down on the floor there we've got burdock so we could dig the root up from that and that's got the carbohydrates and the starches and so that's that's your belly fill but this is the flavor what we're going to do is we're going to with our stick which is which has got a, a chisel end on it which has been fire hardened we're going to just chip away You've got to work for this stuff, haven't you? With this stuff you have, but it's that sort of calories out for calories in. Are we actually going to make, make a difference to our, to our diet? It's something called affordance. And affordance is, is it worth doing? Yes, it is. With burdock, it's always worth doing. Um, but uh, yeah, affordance is a, a term that we use in, in foraging to say whether something is, is going to be worth the effort and this is this is the bit that i'm going to dig down on just here and hopefully in a bit you can see it's beginning to come out let's get this one it's not giving up easy is it no unfortunately burdock i'm going to go around on the other side now burdock does like a bit of stony ground there's most of the root i think we've left a bit at the bottom but uh that's full of starch and sugars hmm hazelnutty Parsnippy, but that's your starch and your carbohydrates, lots of calories. Can you use burdock for, say, thickening broths? It's a good thickener. Uh, you've got to mash it up first, but another one that you can use is jelly ear, and I can show you that in a minute. Well, let's go and have a look at that. The okay. reason I'm asking you, though, is because uh, we also have a piece from Kayat Brin about how to make a good bone broth. So you watch that, and we'll go and find some jelly ear. So a few days ago, I put a post out on Facebook about making a venison bone broth and I had loads of uh, comments and messages asking me how I go about making it and what do they need. So first of all, a kilo and a half of venison bones. You're going to need two large onions, one whole garlic bulb, uh, four celery stalks, three carrots, a two inch piece of ginger, a two inch piece of turmeric, uh, three liters of water and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And that's it that's all the ingredients that you need so step one you're going to put your bones your carrots your celery and your onions and half your bulb of garlic into a roasting dish and roast for about 30 to 40 minutes um, until nice and browned and that will put a nice richness into your broth at the end so once that's done place that into a large pot and add the three liters of water um, and seasoning and simmer for about seven hours and that will release a lot of the kind of the vitamins and minerals and the marrow from the from the bones into your broth now 10 minutes before taking off the heat 
add the rest of your garlic, turmeric, and ginger, and the vinegar. And the reason why we do this at 10 minutes before the end, because we don't want to overcook it, we want to soften it so it keeps all the kind of nutrients together, and uh, we don't boil it to death. Now we're going to let that sit overnight, um, so it infuses, and then the next day, you're going to filter that through a, a muslin cloth, or even a um, sieve, and then you'll have your broth available for you for the next few days, and that will would be a really good elixir that's going to help you uh, fight and resist some of these nasty viral infections. So day two guys and my venison broth is finished. Excuse the self-isolation look, it's been pretty wild out here. Um, so the broth itself has got a nice yellowy tint so I can see the turmeric is infused nicely in there. And it's got a nice strong aroma of the garlic which is what's needed to help combat this virus. So try it at home um, tag us even myself game of flames or field sports channel we'd like to know how you get on and uh, stay safe out there so this is the jelly ear it's a bit dried today because it's well it's been perfect for the last three or four days um, but this one that can be crumbled up crushed up and put into a broth and that is that's the way that you'd thicken it. It's great. It doesn't taste of much, but it does thicken up a broth. So does it, could it be confused with anything else? Because we're always worried about fungus. It can, but if you are able to identify an elder, it's the only one like that that's going to grow on an elder. Okay, so if you've got an elder, you've definitely got jelly ear. Yeah, that's right. Dead elder. And you can see this, this, is, uh, this bit down here. This has seen better days. I know there's some, uh, some live stuff up here, but that's on the underside but wherever it dies off is where you're likely to find it okay now uh, you've probably had a few soups in your in your survival school time haven't you one or two yes <laughs> yeah one or two um the, uh, the the soup that i tell people about though is um the fact that i've made many a tasty soup i've made many a tasty soup yep. and just yep. run me through what that means eye for identification and the identification is 100% positive. If you have any doubt, then leave it out. Especially fungus. Especially, especially fungus, absolutely. Yeah, and umbellifers. What's an umbellifers? It's a big, tall plant with a big white, um, a big white umbel of flowers on the top. You'll see the first lot come out in a couple of months' time, in example? May, cow parsley. Okay. Right. Driving down the lanes, big white swathes, and that'll be cow parsley. Don't eat that. Don't eat it, no, no. Okay. This, these, the first M is uh, for miners, that's the little people, uh, not the people who work for Ken Dodd. They have a dif different digestive capability to adults. They don't like the, the bitterness. Um, my daughters have only just started drinking coffee because it's too bitter, they don't like it. So be aware that young people will not like and not be able to digest what you might be able to as an adult. The second M is medication. Is anything that you're about to eat going to um, affect any medication or exacerbate any medication. So for example, if you were chewing on, uh, on willow bark, which contains salicates, will the salicates, which are linked to salicylic acid, as in aspirin, would you be double dosing? So be aware of that. A for allergies. Uh, the number of people that come on our courses these days who have allergies, it's phenomenal. It's just ballooning. Uh, so do be aware that if you're going to be dealing with things like, uh, like garlic, uh, the, the ramsons, do they have a, an allium allergy? Then, so I've made many A for allergy, T for tasty, T for tolerance. Have you got a tolerance to it? Now, I love hogweed stems in garlic butter. It is fancy. It's just delicious, but it makes me violently ill. I have almost zero tolerance to it. I'm not allergic. It just makes me feel you know, particularly poorly. So you poorly. know you can't have it. Exactly, yeah. And the last one, the S, S for soup, safe sourcing. Are you getting it from the right place? Are you picking your blackberries from beside the A30 or on the hard shoulder of a motorway when you're broken down? Bad, bad news. Because of the cars going past. Exactly, absorbing all the, yeah. uh, the, the all exhaust the and the mud. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other one is don't pick blackberries on a public footpath below knee height. Oh, really? Why, yeah. is, why is that? Do you walk dogs? Yes. Yeah, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay, that's very interesting. What are the rules about foraging? The 1968 Theft Act says that you are allowed to take, as a forager, you are allowed to take the four Fs. So you're allowed to take 
God, you're the all fungi. About, you're all about mnemonics. And, oh, and I love it. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. So, fungi, flowers, fruit, and foliage. You're not allowed to dig roots uh, unless you've got permission from the landowner. I was going to say, we just did. But, you, but we've got permission. Got permission so we're okay there, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the, the Escort Estate have, have given me permission to dig stuff up. So that's all right. Um, now, so when you say uh, flowers, I mean, uh, th there is quite a lot in the news at the moment about, you know, don't go out and pick wild flowers. But actually, you are allowed to. Well, the, 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 there are two reasons why not to. The first one is, are they on the endangered species list? The second one is, um, with regards to flowers, are you going to be picking wildflowers and selling them for commercial gain. That's bad news. Um, there's one other really important thing, and I've seen it in the past where people will swarm in on, it could be blackberries, it, it, it could be wild raspberries, and they will just denude the place. No, we want a bit from here, and a little bit from there, so we're, we're, we're keeping conservation in mind at all times. That's really important. Well, I can see them putting wildflowers on the general licenses at this rate. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to come back to Johnny in just a minute. We're going to have another look around this wood. First up, we're going to have a look at Sergio Couto, our Portuguese friend who lives in Scotland, and what he's been up to with Game Relief. Game Relief, basically, it's a new Facebook page. So the page basically works like this. We have our community, hunting community, and we have people that needs. The people that needs will go to the page, hopefully, and will make a request, which they, they've been doing. They've been doing. They are single mom, and I could do with a little bit of help for some meat. Supermarkets are empty. And someone from the hunting community will pick up that message, will ask where it's from, and hopefully some, some hunter locally will drop something in the door. What I've been doing is I'm not having contact with anybody. I'll ask the address. I'll put the my card, because the idea, I want people to know what I do. I want proud of what I do. I want people to be curious. And I go over, I press the bell, I leave the bag, and I walk away. I don't need nothing else from them. Uh, and I've been, say, been getting really, really nice message of thanks, and that is, that is super. And that's what we need. We need people to see us on the good light, is our best light. And we all know that we can do that. So the hunting community, has a lot to give at the moment, and that's the right time to give. Right, what we have here, we have two poisonous and one edible. The first poisonous is this one. This one is the Arum lily. Yeah. yeah, it's also known as uh, it's known as lords and ladies. Uh, it becomes quite quite uh, sexually graphic. I apologise to any viewers. Um, that becomes the ladies and then what grows up in the middle of it is uh, quite a phallic uh, flower followed oh, yeah. by a flower uh, a, yeah. a spike as well yeah so that's the one you don't eat right good very wise the next one that you don't eat is this one bluebells but it could look superficially like this one uh, there's not too much of a difference really but this one well, i'll tell you what you have a sniff of that one crush it up in your fingers have a sniff, and what do you get from? I can smell it from here. Yep. <laughs> garlic, <laughs> isn't it? Garlic. Yeah, it's just the garlic. Uh, Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Incroyable. Yeah. It, yeah. Fingers, it will stay on your fingers <laughs> all the way home. Yeah. But um, there's no need to dig the bulbs up, and we shouldn't be digging them up anyway. But yeah, garlic is a, is a bit of a go-to for out here, and there are some places which are brilliant. Um, and there, there's garlic just everywhere. It's it's sort of rampant around the woodland. Um, in other uh, times here there's not too much but we've got enough certainly for some garlic bread and that's my favorite garlic bread is what you, so you put it into bread is your yeah favorite. absolutely and, and I, I would dip it into my my uh, many a tasty soup absolutely. <laughs> after scenes of people flocking to rural britain last weekend despite some fairly frank messages from the countryside back at them Johnny is concerned about the future of fragile places like this woodland. The, the countryside is being used as a, um, there can't be the coronavirus out there. The COVID-19 is only in cities, but it, it isn't. It is out here as well. Um, it's just that we have fewer people and it would be a very good idea to leave it like that. So there it is, forage carefully. If you want to go on a course with Johnny, visit survivalschool.co.uk. And if you want to see more of our films with Johnny, click on the link in the description below.
Thank you, Johnny, Kai and Sergio. And to add to it, anyone looking for loo paper in the British countryside can use dock leaves or moss. Do not do as I once did and use hogweed. Of course, we filmed that piece before the new social distancing rules came in. Not that I'd advise anyone to get that close to Johnny, or to me for that matter. Just to remind you, Sergio's Facebook page is called Game Relief. There's a link in the description below and it is UK based. Game Relief is an obvious segue into news, but I'm not going to use it. Here is a very much unrelieved David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. British game shooting is in doubt. There are fears that poults will be neither reared nor imported because of coronavirus restrictions during the crucial nesting season. Meanwhile, many shoots are reporting cancellations next season, with some shooters fearing the country will still face movement restrictions and others worried about the financial fallout from the crisis. After the Prime Minister exempted cycling as a form of exercise, the shooting and angling organisations are urgently trying to find out if the more solitary sport of pigeon shooting, deer stalking and fishing are also exempt. Clay shooting grounds and gun shops are already closed. BBC TV presenter Chris Packham has been ridiculed on social media for suggesting that farmers should self-isolate and stay off their land. The celebrity says the disease is having a huge impact on the countryside and wildlife and farmers need to self-isolate so they won't be able to get in the fields. In an apparent contradiction, Packham followed that up by saying Brits should engage with nature and get out in the great outdoors. Facebook has accused him of being from another planet, among other insults. Some took aim at the BBC, suggesting the Simpsons character Krusty the Clown did the broadcasters fact-checking. Shooter King has 500 protective suits ready to ship to the UK for the NHS. With UK health workers facing a shortfall in protective clothing from the government, shooting clothing manufacturer Shooter King is stepping up to help. Its factories in China have 500 disposable medical protective clothing outfits ready to send to the UK in 13 big boxes for free. Shooter King bosses are currently trying to arrange an RAF flight for the clothing. The clothing has passed safety standards CE and EN14126. Ollie Williams has launched a hunting YouTube channel. The Cornish shooter, who briefly starred in Love Island before Antis began a campaign to oust him, has put up his first video showing him buying ammunition, zeroing his rifle and deer stalking, what he calls my kind of stockpiling. The newspapers were characteristically outraged. Gamekeepers have stopped a fire on moors in the Peak District. A major incident was averted in Woodhead after a fire broke out, according to the Peak District Moorland Group. The fire brigade were called but couldn't reach the area, so it was up to gamekeepers to put it out. Meanwhile, antis are calling on members of the public to notify them if they see gamekeepers carrying out legal muir burn in Yorkshire. Beavers are returning to Sussex after centuries of extinction. It's been 400 years since they vanished from the area. The Sussex Beaver Trial will be reintroducing them on the Nepp Estate, owned by rewilding enthusiast Isabella Tree. They have more than 250 hectares of land to roam. The reintroductions are aimed at restoring wetlands. Beavers can spread rapidly and can be shot in England and Wales. However, Scotland banned beaver shooting in 2019. Gamekeepers in Scotland have built a new home for a pair of ospreys. Wildlife photographer Gordon Linton has been keeping an eye on the ospreys and decided something needed to be done to help them after seeing their nests wrecked by gales. He contacted local estate gamekeepers from the Angus Glens Moorlands group. They built a secure platform and a nest in a tree where the birds had previously nested successfully. The UK's leading game processors say they will only collect game from BGA assured shoots. As long as next season goes ahead, Peterborough Game, Brayhead Foods, Vickers Game and the Lincolnshire Game Company say the move is to meet quality assurance demands of their clients. This means millions more birds will come under the BGA Shoot Assurance Scheme, the Red Tractor Scheme for Shoots, which ensures processors have clear documented regulation on animal welfare and environmental impact, and the game meets the same standards as other proteins on the market. Irish commercial fishermen were told not to fish at the weekend because the markets collapsed. 
The Irish South and West Fish Producers Organisation said it was irresponsible to keep landing fish if they're just going to get thrown away and is asking for a financial package from the Irish government to keep the industry afloat. The organisation has 60 vessels and employs about 500 fishermen. Is fishing for fun bad for the environment? Yes, according to the Arizona Bay Centre for Biological Diversity, citing two recent studies in the journals Fish and Fisheries and Frontiers in Marine Science, it argues that recreational fishing has a bigger collective effect on oceanic species than previously thought, with nearly 1 million tonnes of fish caught every year. That's about 1% of global marine fisheries catch, and is caught by the estimated 220 million people who go fishing for fun every year. It also points out that there are threatened populations of fish where commercial fishing is banned, but recreational angling continues. The US government has hired a trophy hunting advocate for a top conservation role. The Fish and Wildlife Service picked Anna Seidman, former legal advocacy director for Safari Club International, as assistant director of its international affairs programme. Left-wing media has been seething at the news, pointing out that Seidman has a history of suing the department that's employing her. At the same time, SCI says sportsmen and women generate about a billion dollars for American fish and wildlife agencies through taxes on hunting, shooting and fishing equipment. Hunters and anglers are the main drivers of conservation efforts in the US, the SCI says, adding that American sportsmen and women are the engine of conservation. Researchers say that elephants who take tourists for rides are not stressed by the experience. The study in the Journal of Veterinary Science and Animal Welfare says the animals benefit as the money earned from tourism helps maintain them. It says there is no evidence elephants have unpleasant experiences while being ridden, handled and taught or interacting with the handlers based on recordings of their heart rates. The results show semi-captive elephants working in the tourist industry can have a life free of prolonged stress and distress if they create a strong bond with their handlers. However, the report says there remains bad practices particularly in Asia. A hunter in Florida is recovering from a panther attack. Facebook user Spook Span posted photos of his friend Jason with stitches in his face after a big cat stalked and attacked him. Jason was out turkey hunting at the time. The post said it was the first recorded panther attack in the state. The animal hit Jason so hard he flew 10 foot backwards. In 2017, the US Fish and Wildlife Service estimated there were 120 to 230 Florida Panthers left. Big game shooters are claiming a win as black rhino numbers soar in South Africa. An increase of several hundred is being described as a rare boost for a species sliding towards extinction because of poachers. Black rhinos are still said to be endangered, according to The Guardian, but the population grew from 4,845 in 2012 to about 5,680 in 2018. The paper says the cost of keeping rhinos has risen as about half of white rhinos and about 40% of black rhinos live on private land or land managed by communities. The main income that pays for them comes from hunting. A man in Zimbabwe has been killed by lions. Butcher Kapandura was attacked and partially eaten by two lions near Lake Kariba in Zimbabwe. Locals complained that the attack should not have happened but because the lions were collared and due to the Cecil effect, they were not hunted, even though it would be legal. Deer in East London have enjoyed a late night out on the town. Bucks were spotted staggering home early one morning last week by Langbine Wildlife. The animals headed back into the woods, but not after a moonlit picnic by a pelican crossing, according to the Facebook post. And finally, a wildfowler has posted how he's coping with self-isolation. John Bannister put this on the Field Sports for All Facebook page. At the same time, the International Sportsman Facebook page has done much the same for anglers. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And I wonder just how big his hair will get over coming months without the usual shampoo and set. Now, something to keep you occupied in the next few weeks. Think Wikipedia meets which meets hunting and shooting sports. We know the hunting, shooting and countryside community loves kit and loves talking about kit. So we want to create a community resource where, regardless of budget, people can make informed buying decisions. Over the coming months, we will be developing our field tester mini site to cover clothing, accessories, guns, rifles, optics, even dog food. 
This is not a brand bashing exercise, it's for the benefit of consumers and manufacturers. We want to hear about the good, the bad and the ugly. What we're asking you to do is spend some time answering questions about the kit you own. We will provide the survey. How much did you pay for it? How many stars would you give it for durability or value for money? Once we've crunched the data, we want to offer sound advice on which products are delivering good value at every price point. There's a link on the screen and there are links in the description below. If you are a constant contact subscriber, it will be on the weekly email. Lastly, this is open to all of you, wherever you are in the world. Now, later in the show, we're back on coronavirus. First, here is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, welcome to Shepherd's Bush in the heart of West London. Uh, today I'm going to be butchering this deer, kindly donated by Tim Weston at Savanac Sporting and we're going to be giving all the meat to uh, local vulnerable people who are really suffering uh, during this crisis. Universally, people in this uh, part of our town are incredibly excited about getting this delicious wild organic meat um, and maybe it just goes to show there's not such a big difference between town and country after all. All the best. Hello Charlie. How's this for people having fun? Hello Charlie, it's Michael from Germany and Wald und Wild TV. Very happy greetings from one of the final driven days we have this year. Um, oh, I got to be careful, the beaters are approaching. Outlaw from Best Fox Call, Tim Lester, Beer Ring Campbell, Play. That gives you 20 seconds to wash your hands. Hello, Charlie. How's this for folks having fun? Put it on safety. That's it, a mix of pre and post virus crisis videos there. Please send me your coronavirus Hello Charlie video to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those, please keep them coming. Now, coronavirus again. And it's having a different effect on different hunters throughout the world. We asked a few of our global hunting friends to talk us through what's happening in their countries. First up, it's Philou Chasse, the French hunter best known for his appearances in wild boar fever. They've got a problem with wild boar in France and it could land at shooters' doors. For France, uh, it's quite simple. We are not allowed to uh, quit the house. We are confined and um, so uh, there is no specific rules about ammunition and uh, rifle guns and uh, everything else is just uh, we cannot go outside so uh, every outdoor activities are forbidden like uh, hunting fishing uh, shooting pests and we have quite some uh, some problems some issues with the wild boar because in france uh, hunters are responsible for paying the damage they do to the crops and um, we cannot put, uh, we are not allowed to put electric fences uh, anymore and also to put corn in the forest to uh, keep them uh, into the forest. From French wild boar to Australia, where Rob Fickling is two days into a hunt in Gippsland, Victoria. We are still allowed to hunt. We've got interstate travel banned, and all places and pubs and meetings and things like that uh, have, um, have stopped, and social distancing is in place, but small business is going on. There's a fair bit of uh, buying or panic buying if you like on ammunition. We're not sure why that is but we're probably presuming it's linked to the states and we're worried that if America runs out quick as they do we'll follow on. So um, we're trying to stay positive though. It is the start of our rut down here so of our fallow croak and our red roar. Despite the travel bans we've got great hunting in our states and uh, there's never been more of a need, I suppose, to get out and get fresh meat as some of the crazy panic buying goes on and the supermarkets are a bit out. Thank you, Rob. Back to Europe and to Spain, which has been hit hard by the virus. Hunting YouTuber Pedro de Ampuero explains how life has changed. As you may know, in Spain, the situation is critical as cases keep increasing and we already have over 1,000 deaths, so things are in looking good at all. We have been almost one week in confinement already with only the basic search basic services running and we foreseen to be like this at least for one more month. As you can imagine, the situation for a country which one of the main economies is tourism is not looking very promising. 
On the hunting side, due to the travel restriction, many cancellations have taken place, which is very bad not only for the outfitters, but also for the conservation plans taking place. We have plenty of wild boars in the cities that needs to be controlled, and even a wolf has seen, been seen in the streets of a city already. Roebuck season was ready to open on the 1st of April, but it has been also postponed due to the state of alarm. I believe though that it's time to be responsible and that the hunting community, as much as we want to get out in nature where we belong, that we prove to be an example and that we keep following the directions of the professionals on this matter and stay at home. We already know of one death in the Italian and Maltese hunting community. Giovanni Bana, one of the founders of the European Federation for Hunting and Conservation, FACE, died in a Milan hospital on the 20th of March. At this time of year, the Maltese would be getting ready for the spring hunt, where they shoot up to 5,000 turtle doves migrating north from Africa. Don't believe what Chris Packham tells you. The Maltese now breed and release more turtle doves than they shoot, and the rest of mainland Europe shoots an estimated 2 million of the birds. Here's Lucas Mikalev from Malta. To date, we don't know what is going to happen. Um, things are escalating daily. Uh, we normally do tend to hunt uh, 15 days within the month of April. So uh, we don't know, we've got to literally live day by day. From Southern Europe to South Africa and to our old friend Nico Else, the international bans on travel have hit the hunting industry hard. And as of Thursday, the South African president is ordering a lockdown in the country. We all taking it very seriously, but I haven't seen or experienced any panic buying. So that's one good thing. Um, unfortunately, our tourism and hunting industry is taking a hell of a knock from this. Um, nobody can come in or out of South Africa and a lot of guys have lost all their clientele and all their business for the year. So it'll have detrimental economical effect um, on not only the tourism industry but the whole of South Africa because tourism makes such a big part of our uh, um, of our economy. Thank you, Nico. Back to Europe and to Germany, where Jan Hufmeyer from the gear testing website, geartester.de, says the hunting organizations are looking for clarity. There is an unclear situation right now if uh, we are, as a hunter, as we, we are, can still go hunting. Um, so at the moment, our hunting association is, is uh, in contact with the ministry um, to clear this situation. But at the moment, we have no answer. So um, yeah, we get more and more limited. And uh, what I can tell from here is, uh, at the moment, we are allowed to go hunting alone. Uh, but of course, uh, there there will be some changes in the near future. But I will I will keep you updated. And uh, yeah. Stay safe uh, and keep social distance and uh, we will make it. Next up, a Scandinavian combo. From a manufacturing perspective, we have Alexander Norden from Aimpoint in Sweden. As of today, Tuesday, we're running business as usual. Uh, we can go to our offices if we feel 100% okay and the production is up and running. This can, of course, change any day, but so far, so good. Uh, regarding traveling, as for anybody else, we can travel abroad and EWA was cancelled, so we still have a lot of meetings to take care of. We try to do this over video calls, get hold of our customers one way or another. Um, shows and shooting events and such are also being cancelled, of course. Um, regarding hunting, I would say that most of our seasons are closed, so it's not that much of a nightmare, it could be worse. Um, I've seen a lot of guys taking care of their hunting grounds, training their dogs, so that's probably good. Um, apart from that, not very much is good with this situation. The only thing that is good, I would say, I have a few dealers that are big online. They've come up with some cool ideas, thinking outside the box what we can do to get some sales to their shops and so on. So hopefully we'll get some sales and uh, everybody stay safe. Hopefully the situation will be gone as soon as possible. That's Red Dot Sights. What about rifles? Here's Klaus Bjorksten from his office in the Sacco factory in Finland. Here in uh, Riimäki, we are open. Our factory is still operational. Uh, we are naturally taking all necessary precautions and following the recommendations of the authorities in order to ensure the safety of, of, of all our employees. One of the good things about living in Finland is that we are a relatively large country with a population of only 5 million people. The country is approximately the size of France. 
So uh, other than in the cities, people can actually easily avoid each other. And some may even say that it's Finnish nature to stay to oneself. On the lighter side, since Finland is one of the largest paper manufacturers in the world, we should be good on toilet paper for the foreseeable future. But all in all, this is obviously a serious situation. I hope that everybody is well. Jens Ulrich Hoog is a Dane living in Sweden. He reckons a lot of hunters there are going to self-isolate in the forests looking for ball. At the moment, nobody's really thinking about hunting. Uh, the hunting season is far away. We still have wild ball hunting. We have that year round in, in Sweden. And I suspect that in the coming weeks and months, uh, Swedish hunters will be spending a lot of time in the forest because the type of wild ball hunting we have is basically sitting at a bait alone, pretty isolated from the rest of the world. I also suspect that a lot of wild ball meat will end up in rural freezes all over Sweden as things develop. Finally, Denmark and David Carson Pedersen's hunting course is now online. Greetings from Denmark. We are at a complete lockdown. We're not completely quarantined by law, but everybody is staying at home. Uh, I have uh, fled to our farm in Jutland, and um, luckily I have space and opportunity to uh, do a lot of stuff up here uh, to prepare for the coming season. If it's gonna open as normal, we don't know yet, but uh, it is what it is. Um, we have also uh, changed a lot of things that we uh, would normally do. I am running a hunting course through uh, Zoom for 25 people starting on Sunday and going uh, every second day for the next two weeks. So we'll have 25 participants sitting behind their screens and uh, learning about hunting and looking <laughs> so much forward to uh, getting out and getting some fresh air. Let's end on some hope. As you may know, we are one of the biggest UK made TV shows in China. And our man there, Philip Zhang from Ningbo, explains how they are coming out of coronavirus. Now I'm in China, everything is getting better and better. We are winning uh, the, the battle against uh, the COVID-19. Hope everything is well in your countries. Uh, I think that uh, wearing uh, the facial mask and wash your hands uh, frequently is quite helpful uh, to to um, to be not infected with the disease. And uh, the most important thing is that you you should not go out to the crowded place. If you if you have to go out, don't forget to wear your facial mask, and I hope you. Uh, hope everything is well. Thank you to everyone for your international hunter's perspective. Now a quick shout out to a young man in hospital. William Crowther is in Darlington Hospital after emergency surgery for a ruptured appendix. Now he's a mad keen grouse and pheasant beater, says his dad Bob, and he shoots clay pigeons and he shoots real pigeons. So get well soon, William, from all of us. Next to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Pest control time, Jakter Leben is shooting geese with Sven and Lübers in Lower Saxony. It's in German, but you will get the picture. Tommy from Rural Pest Control Whitwell in the north of England sends me this a few nights out shooting rabbits in a couple of different locations. The pigeon plucker pops over his latest a short video he shot while picking up towards the end of last season, a fun day had by all and a nice mixed bag of around 150. With lead no longer at the top of shooters' minds, pushed into second place by the coronavirus, Sacco Cartridges has launched its new lead-free blade bullet made of copper and this is the promo film. Pedro de Empuero, featured in this episode of Field Sports Britain, has a superb hunting YouTube channel and he's reorganised it for all you self-isolators. This film is about the hunting life of his father, Pepe Empuero. This guy featured on a Facebook group I follow, James Jeans, shoots clay pigeons with a bow and arrow. The film is his first archery trick shot live show, shot in Georgia and it makes half an hour of good quality TV. Eddie Tunstall from the Somerset Hunters asks, why don't I feature hunting 
watching podcasts since we're all at home and looking for entertainment. Good idea, though I can only plug YouTube channels. Here are the Somerset Hunters on Catapult Practice, and if you look around their channel, you will find the YouTube version of their podcasts. There are lots of great hunting podcasts out there. Joe Rogan and Meat Eater in the USA, Into the Wilderness from the Pace Brothers, and Fair Game Pursuits in the UK, the Australian hunting podcast. So I tried to find one I did not know, and I found the I Am Hunter podcast from Hunt Shack in Australia. This one with Garrick Cameron, also known as Lord of the Lettuce, for reasons that will become clear if you listen to it. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film or a podcast channel you want us to pop into the weekly top eight, if you are starting your own YouTube channel at this time of trouble, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please pop over to our website. There's much to do there. You can click like us on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can fill out our surveys. You can find out about shooting, hunting, fishing during the coronavirus lockdown. You can subscribe to our newsletter. It goes out every Wednesday to coincide with this show, Field Sports Britain, 7 p.m. every Wednesday. And you can still back us go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash fieldsportsnation. Links to all of these in the description below. I can't really say good hunting, good shooting and good fishing this week because there isn't much, but do your best and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.